In this lecture, let's briefly talk about the attributes of JSX elements and how it is different from HTML attributes. An attribute is nothing but a property which we use for an XML element. Now we know that both HTML and JSX are XMLs. And in an XML, we can have an element. For example, we have this div element here. And that element can have attributes. So for this div element, this class name is its attribute. In the same way, this image is an element. And for this image element, this source, this alt, this width, this class name, these are attributes for this image element. And this code which you see here is JSX code. That means this image element here is a JSX element. And for this JSX element, this source is its attribute. This alt is its attribute. This width is its attribute. In the same way, this button is also a JSX element. For this button element, this class name is its attribute. For most of the time, the JSX attributes are similar to the HTML attributes. But there are some attributes which works and which behaves differently in JSX than in HTML. And in this lecture, we are going to talk about those attributes. So the first attribute which we are going to talk about is the source attribute of this image element. Now, if I go to the web page, here we have a product. And for this product, I want to display an image. And currently we are not displaying any image. That's because currently the source attribute is not assigned with the path of the image which we want to display. So the first thing which I'm going to do is Inside this source folder, I will create a new folder and I'll call it images. And inside this images folder, we are going to keep all our product images. Then I already have one image which I have saved. So I will grab it from here and I will put it inside this images folder. Okay, so this is the image which I want to display for this product. Now what we need to do is we need to specify the path of this image for this source attribute. So we are using this image element inside this product.js file. This product.js file is present in components folder. So here, first, we need to move one folder up to this source folder. For that, we can use two dots and a slash. So now we are in source folder. From this source folder, we need to go to this images folder. So here we can say images. And then in this images folder, we have this image. So the name of the image is fresh hyphen image dot PNG. Actually, it is fresh hyphen milk dot PNG. All right, with this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and you will notice that the image is still not displayed. Let's open developer console and let's see if we have any error. So you can see we don't even have any error here. So why it is not displaying this image? That's because here we cannot assign the local path like this to this source attribute. Here what we need to do is we need to wrap this path within curly braces like this. And now if I save the changes, it will still not work. So let's save the changes and let's see that. So still the image is not being displayed here. That's because we also need to call a method here. So within these curly braces, we need to call this require method. And to this require method, we need to pass this path as its argument. And now if I save the changes and if we go to the web page, now you will notice that that image has been rendered here. Now, if you are using some image from an external server, in that case, you don't need to do it like this. In that case, you can simply assign a string to this source. So for example, you can do something like this and here you can specify the link of that image which you want to use but here since we want to use the image from our local server so in that case we will have to do it like this all right now here what we can also do is we can create a property let's call it maybe image url and to this i can assign this method so i'll cut it from here I'll paste it here and then here we can use this image URL variable. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and it should still work. All right. Another JSX attribute which is commonly used and which works slightly different than HTML attribute 
is the style attribute so on this pen element i want to use this style attribute and here i want to set the padding to let's say 0 pixel top bottom and 20 pixel left right okay if i save the changes if i go to the web page you will notice that now the product is not being displayed so let's open developer console and here you will notice that we have an error and the error says the style prop expects a mapping from style properties to values not a string so this style is a prop and we will talk about prop in great detail in our coming lectures and it is saying that we are trying to assign a string to it but instead of assigning a string it is expecting an object okay so here you can see we also have an example and in this example to this style we are assigning an object so here also instead of assigning a string like this to this style we need to assign an object and since we want to assign an object to this style attribute first we need to use a set of curly braces like this and inside that we can assign an object to this style attribute so we can create that object here so i will create a variable i will call it style and here we can specify the css styles which we want to apply here i want to apply padding and to this padding i will assign a string and here I'll specify the padding. So top bottom 0 pixel and left right 20 pixel. Okay, now I will pass this style object here within this curly braces. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And here we have an error. And this error is because here in this style object we have used a semicolon. So here we don't need to use a semicolon. Let's now save the changes. Let's go to the web page and everything should be fine. Let me close this here. So now you can see a padding of 20 pixel has been added here in this span. Now, if you want to add some more CSS styles, so for example, let's say I want to add font size. So I can type it something like this font and then the S of this size should be caps. And to this, I can sign a value, let's say 12 pixel. So here I don't need to specify px because react will automatically add that px after this value. So if I save the changes, if I go to the web page, you will notice that the font size has been reduced to 12 pixel. And if you want to use this property like you use it in CSS, so for example, font hyphen size, in that case, you will have to wrap it within quotes something like this and here you can specify the name as font hyphen size so in this case it will work but if you don't wrap it within quotes in that case since for an object's property we cannot have a space or a hyphen between them it will not allow you to use this you know this name as its property so if you want to use this name as the property name in that case you will have to wrap it within quotes and this should also work if i save the changes you will notice that it is still working. Let me increase the font size to 14. And if you go to the web page, you will notice that the font size has increased to 14. So you can also specify the property name like this. Now, if you want to use this style attribute on multiple elements, and for each of those elements, the style is going to be different. In that case, you can use inline styling. So instead of creating a style object like this and then assigning it to the style attribute, within these curly braces, you can specify another set of curly braces indicating that here you are creating an object. And inside this, you can specify the property and its value. So here I can set this padding. So to this, I will assign a string and there I will set the padding for top bottom to zero pixel and left right to 14 pixel I also want to set the font size so for that I will use quotes like this and I will say font hyphen size and I want to set this font size to maybe 13 pixel and here I can simply assign 13 because px will be appended to this value by react and now we don't need this style object so I will comment it here if I save the changes and if I go to the web page 
it should still be working okay but here what we are doing is now we are setting the style in line in the same way let's go ahead and let's add some style for this h6 element so again here we can use this style attribute and to this let's assign an object and here i want to set margin right so since i want to use this hyphen here i will have to wrap it within quotes like this and to this i want to assign a value let's say 30 pixel again i don't need to use this pixel i can simply use 30. if i save the changes if we go to the web page you will notice that after this price we have a margin of 30 pixel this is all i wanted to show you in this lecture in the next lecture let's see how we can add classes dynamically in react